Released by Mercury Steam and Kojima Productions in 2010 on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, Castlevania Lords of Shadow will be a hack and slash action adventure completely rebooting the Castlevania mythos. Written and directed by Enrique Alvarez alongside Luis Miguel Quijada, the game would feature the talents of Robert Carlyle and Patrick Stewart as well as support from Hideo Kojima and become the best-selling Castlevania game. The story only gets larger from here so let's cut it down to size with a recapitation. As the game begins, it's the year 1047 as on a dark and stormy night a holy warrior named Gabriel Belmont saves the village from lichens and wards with a powerful chain whip produced from his combat cross. Introducing himself as from an order of knights called the Brotherhood of Light, he is journeying to find the Guardian of the Lake, single-mindedly driven by the lost love of his recently murdered wife, Marie. A magical horse responds to his presence, taking him to the Guardian despite more war-griding lichens that relentlessly pursue him. Smashing through the goblins that swarm him in the poisonous swamp, Gabriel finds mausoleums of fallen knights, which empowers the warrior's whip for the way ahead. Arriving at the Temple of the Old God, Gabriel speaks to Pan, the Guardian of the Lake of Oblivion, where the living can talk to the dead. Gabriel feels God has abandoned mankind as creatures from the Void rise up to wipe out humanity, though the leaders of the Order believe his hard times are the result of a powerful spell by someone who has cut them off from God. Gabriel adds, the Order said a clue to their salvation lies in a message meant for the Belmont at this lake, stating to the side that the soul of his wife, who was killed a couple of days ago, among others, are trapped here and cannot pass on in peace. Pan tests the warrior in a vision, where Gabriel sees Marie, but kills her with his own hands while wearing a fractured black mask. Confused by what that means, Gabriel is allowed to continue to the lake, but is caught by a titan along the way he must climb and destroy. Finding himself a bit outmatched, Gabriel is helped by another knight who engages the Colossus and deals the finishing blow. Seeing the spirit of Marie appear before him, Gabriel apologizes for failing to protect her, but she doesn't blame him, instead saying the spirits who founded the Order are speaking to her and say per a prophecy the power of the Lords of Shadow is the key. The warrior who helped him introduces himself as Zobek, an old acquaintance of Pan who is here to help the Belmont on his mission. Zobek elaborates that the prophecy states a pure-hearted warrior will claim the power of the Lords of Shadow, become God's vassal, and use the supreme power to defeat all evil and reunite this world with heaven. Zobek claims Gabriel could even bring Marie back, and interested, Gabriel agrees, insisting they move quickly before the Dark Lords learn of their plan. Splitting up, Gabriel heads for the Land of the Lycans while he asks Zobek to prepare a path into vampire territory and they'll meet up to take on the Lord of the Necromancers together. Zobek hands Gabriel a medallion that allows him to leverage light magic as Gabriel passes by the bleached bones lining torturous tunnels filled with giant spiders. Finding more Gandalfi's whip upgrades, the Belmont ventures into the ruined city of Agharta, now occupied by the Lycans and their lord, using the local trolls to force his way through. Finding another medallion that allows him to channel empowering shadow magic, Gabriel learns Agharta was once a technologically advanced city, which, despite their powerful titans, fell in the necromantic wars against the Lycan lord. Further in, Gabriel is saved by a girl with a strange dark crystal that enables her to summon a powerful creature that decimates her foes. The mute acrobatic girl beckons Gabriel to follow her, descending into the dismal depths of a deadly dungeon, drowning in droves of diminutive demons. The imps are destroyed by a daunting dark knight as the girl telepathically speaks to Gabriel, revealing she has a gift to do this as well as read minds. Introducing herself as Claudia, she adds the Dark Knight as her protector who absorbs the energy of evil souls she lures in for him, using them as a power source. After reading his mind, she decides to join Gabriel on his mission and guide him through the city, explaining the people of Akarta also created the crystals like the one she used and the titan Gabriel fought earlier. In fact, her father created her Black Knight Guardian and mentions there is one last active titan in the way of the Sanctuary of the Dark Lord, meaning they will have to defeat it. Gabriel, the girl, and her golem work together to grind down the last titan, though that night, Gabriel has a vision of killing Claudia who accepts her sacrifice. Snapping away, Gabriel sees Pan, who says he will need the gauntlet of the Black Knight for the path ahead, but Gabriel refuses to hurt his allies. However, the Old God points out he has already done so, pointing to Claudia, freshly killed with a Belmont's own knife, just like in his nightmare. Seeing this, the Golem retaliates fiercely as the two knights clash, and Gabriel emerges victorious, reluctantly claiming the gauntlet he needs, quelling its rageful soul, and using its mighty strength to force his way through the ruined city. Met by the Lycan leader, Gabriel claims he is here per prophecy and the Lord of Shadow questions if the Brotherhood member knows where he is and who he faces. The Immortal admits there is a prophecy but scoffs at Gabriel's self-righteous declarations and ignorance of the truth. He explains that centuries ago, three legendary warriors founded the Brotherhood of Light where they fought Satan's hellspawn for decades and tipped the scales in God's favor. 
Their journey led them to three places where God's power was so strong it bridged their world and heaven, and within that purifying power they shed their human bodies and ascended into spiritual beings with power second only to God. However, the bodies they left behind were actually the dark sides of themselves, and it was these remnants that became the Lords of Shadow. Gabriel is shocked to learn this, denying it, as the Lycan Lord reveals this spot is where one of the founders ascended to heaven and created him in the process. The Immortal also reveals he knows the prophecy states a warrior of light will reclaim the power of his heavenly half upon his death, but explains they are both still the same being, so when one dies, so too does the other. In other words, killing the Lords of Shadow means killing the founders of his order too. He laughs at the irony of Gabriel's mission to save the world from the beings of chaos created by the holiest of his own order in the first place, but squares up anyway, ready to challenge his fate and introduces himself as Cornell, Lord of the Lycans. Whittling down the power source wielded by the werewolf lord in his mightiest form, Gabriel stakes his claim for the win, claiming Cornell's relic and power for his own. Seeing part of a strange mask left behind, Gabriel is met by Pan in a bird form who tells him there are two more of the god mask to find and combine, flying him to the land of the vampires next. Spotting a ruined keep atop a mountain peak, Gabriel overcomes that oversized ogre and is met by a murder of crows and a magically mischievous chupacabra. The warrior learns a witch named Malthus is suffering under lost love like him, guarding this fortress as the knight impales the crow witch atop her spire, himself saved from the collapse by Pan's horse form yet again. Taken through the deadly cold that plagues the land where undead thrive, Gabriel spots the vampire's castle beyond the frostbitten village of Weigel where the villagers give him an equally cold reception. Spotting Zobek offering prayers to the Fallen, Gabriel learns the vampires have learned of their quest and slaughtered the village in expectation of their arrival. At the same time, Zobek shares that the abbot of this village has a relic with the power of the sun able to burn vampires to ash. However, rather than use the relic to save the village, the abbot barricaded himself inside and used it to protect the abbey, laying traps to deter all manner of outsiders. Ghouls now emerge from the forsaken graveyard just as Gabriel upgrades the combat cross with a convenient stake, determined to confront the mad monk. The duo work together to face down the vampiric horde and navigate around the abbot's traps, including one that almost turns them both into a sandwich. Shaming the selfish abbot, they take the relic from him and leave him to pay for the sin of betraying his people. Returning to the village, Gabriel sees the vampires have begun murdering the townsfolk and burning it down, defeating all of them single-handedly while also slaying the leader of the attack, Brawner. The grateful survivors of Weigel thank the warrior, calling him their savior and dubbing his whip Vampire Killer as they show him a secret route into the vampire's castle. Slogging through the sewers, Gabriel strikes down skeleton warriors in animated armor before maneuvering a maze garden with its mandragoras and monstrous spiders. Forcing open the castle's windows to burn the nests of the vampire spawn, the Belmont is paused by a childlike vampire named Laura who challenges him in a game of wits with a chess-like wargame. Besting her, she begrudgingly steps aside as Gabriel passes through the kitchen and contends with the demonic butcher, roasting him before he is chopped up himself. Finding a lab of Dr. Frankenstein, Gabriel clashes with his leftover curiosities and mechanical monstrosities as Laura returns, still sore about her loss. She sends her dolls after the warrior and joins in the attack, showcasing her unlimited power. Gabriel is brought to his knees by her magic when the spirit of Marie comes out to encourage him even though he admits he has done terrible things on this journey. Seeing their love pauses Laura, who admits she envies them and suddenly loses interest in the fight, sparing the warrior. Unsure why, Gabriel continues his march towards the main castle, climbing a cumbersome clock tower. Bronner's brother Ulrox clashes with Gabriel but falls in their duel, being made into a blood sacrifice to open the way to the Lord of Darkness waiting beyond. The vampire Lord Carmilla greets the Belmont, who doesn't listen to any of her temptations and empty promises. She laughs at his meager understanding of the situation, telling him he will have to choose sides, and regardless of what he was told, there is no way to resurrect the dead. Assuming her vampiric form, Carmilla's fight with the Brotherhood Knight takes them outside into the storm where Gabriel stakes her atop her own castle and confirms the kill. Claiming more holy power, gaining wings of his own, and collecting another mask fragment, Gabriel sees Pan appear in person and asks him what is really the point of his journey cleaning up the mess left behind by the Founder's arrogance and foolishness. Pan replies that the answer lies inward, beckoning to a magic mirror, and wishing to find if Carmilla was telling the truth or not, Gabriel steps inside. Finding himself in a rotted land reeking of the stench of death, Gabriel fends off hordes of zombies as he crosses a bone forest and spots an unusual house with a witch within. Introducing herself as Baba Yaga, she says she serves the King of the Angels and can guide him to the land of the dead if he passes her test. Agreeing, Gabriel frees Baba Yaga of the demonic scarecrows Malthus made to imprison her and she shrinks him down inside of a magical music box to watch him pass deadly obstacle courses set to a familiar classical tune. 
Succeeding, he is sent to the Land of the Dead as agreed, appearing in the Titan's graveyard and contending with cursed coffins among the army of the dead the necromancers raised here. Gabriel is surprised to find Pan here too, as the old god forebodingly states one of their paths will end here, transforming into a giant silver warrior and lashing out of the night. He declares that unless Gabriel kills him here, he will not be prepared to fulfill his destiny, revealing a suitable sacrifice has to be made to open the path ahead and knew Gabriel would not willingly accept that, forcing his hand. As Pan falls to the Belmont, the path of the Lord of the Dead accepts the death of a god, opening up and revealing a massive crematory guarded by a powerful gravedigger demon who can unearth undead at an unbelievable speed. Triumphant over the foe, Gabriel fells followers of the Dark Lord of the Dead as the Necromancer finally faces him, noting how they both revel in death. The Necromancer merges with the bones of a Dracolich Titan as Gabriel scales the colossal beast in an aerial battle, breaking it down piece by piece and escaping its jaws of death with a new power to claim for himself. Victorious, Gabriel claims the final god mask fragment and merges all three pieces. Just then, Zobik emerges to congratulate him, holding a familiar shattered mask of his own and declaring an end to the charade. Putting it on, Zobik reveals he is the final Lord of Shadow and the true necromancer, as well as the one who separated Earth from Heaven. He knew it would force his heavenly brethren to contact the Order here on Earth under the hope of the prophecy being true. Meanwhile, Zobek would have Gabriel destroy the balance of power held by the other lords so he could take over. Using the dark power collected in Gabriel's gauntlet against him, Zobek pins down the warrior, exposing that Gabriel's desire to see Marie has blinded him to the dark path of violence he chose to arrive here. Though Zobek did not expect the murderous rage within the night to be so strong, he found the Belmont all too easy to influence because of it, revealing Gabriel was controlled into killing his own wife, who still had hope for him even in death. Knocking Gabriel out with his powerful magic, Zobek laughs and claims the god mask, picking it up, but is suddenly haunted by a voice that mocks him in turn. The voice reminds Zobek this entire plan was really his idea, and Zobek was just a pawn himself who has now played out his role, immolating him in fire and destroying the Necromancer easily. Stepping in to pick up the mask is a spear-wielding man clad in darkness, claiming God will now bow down to him. Meanwhile, on the verge of death, the spirits surround Gabriel as Marie comes to his side, telling them not to take him yet, as his heart is still good and he still is their best hope for defeating evil. Restored to life, Gabriel faces down the man who comments God had abandoned him too and he didn't deserve to be cast out of heaven, revealing himself to be the fallen angel Satan, here to continue his rebellion against God. Gabriel chooses to believe in humanity's option of a path of forgiveness and love as the Belmont brings a brutal beatdown upon Satan, completely burying him and reminding him mankind has the power to repent for their sins, unleashing all of his holy energy to burn the angel in purifying light. Collapsing, Gabriel is met by the spirits and Marie after his victory, wondering why he is still alive and she replies it is so he can still make amends. She knew all along Gabriel killed her unknowingly, but did not tell him as she wanted his resolve to remain firm to complete his mission. Her love for him never wavered and she is proud of him for saving the world. As Gabriel puts on the god mask, he sees its power only allows him to see Marie in corporeal form long enough for one kiss, but quickly realizes she cannot truly be brought back to life, accepting that he was a fool for believing a lie. Forced to say goodbye to his wife once more, Gabriel also sees the spirit of Claudia wish him well too, as they take the god mask with them and the Belmont is left alone in this world once again. Not knowing what to do with his life now, Gabriel hears the voice of Laura snap him to attention and beg him for help. Venturing back to Carmilla's former castle, she learns what happened to him and offers him small comfort that one gets used to feeling alone and betrayed, but also reveals that by destroying the Lords of Shadow, he has released a greater evil. Called the Forgotten One, it was a creature fought by the three founders and sealed deep under this fortress that now threatens to break free of its weakened prison and destroy the world. However, in his depression, Gabriel doesn't care about the world, its problems, or his fault in the matter. However, Laura still convinces him they are the only people left strong enough to do something about it, and reluctantly the Belmont agrees to help. Unlocking the castle's basement, Gabriel finds ancient horrors lurking beneath like Leviathan spawn, and the duo team up to overcome the obstacles and foes they face together. Pushing past the puzzles and perils in the prison forged by the founders, they find the portal to the interdimensional rift containing the Forgotten One. Gabriel moves to enter, but Laura halts him, detecting that only beings of darkness can survive within, and as a human, he will die. Though there is darkness within him, he is still too human, and so Laura offers her own blood to him to become a true monster at the cost of her own life. Grimly accepting this, Gabriel reluctantly drinks deeply, and as he does so, Laura thanks him, saying her power will become his and she will finally know the release of death. Enduring his painful transformation, Gabriel encounters the Sovereign of the Elemental Plane of Darkness, finding the monster lives up to its reputation. 
The Forgotten One scoffs at the knight, sensing something off about his soul, but gains new respect as the Belmont breaks through his armor and manages to match his might. Unfortunately, the Forgotten One is about to make his escape anyway, though Gabriel prowls close behind, striking when the Forgotten One is fatigued from expending energy to break more seals in his path. Once the final seal is broken, the Forgotten One moves to recollect his expended power, but at the last second, Gabriel dashes in and absorbs the demon's tremendous font of might for himself. Stronger than ever before, Gabriel is easily able to best the weakened Forgotten One now, forcing him to yield but showing no mercy. Destroying the once insurmountable foe in a single strike, Gabriel now turns to leave the underworld, smashing the vampire killer into pieces, fulfilling the prophecy to save the world, but having left behind all of his friends, loved ones, and now humanity behind. Time passes as we see a resurrected Zobek enter a ruined castle and speak to Gabriel, who is now referred to as the Prince of Darkness, Dracula, warning him Satan's acolytes are preparing for his return and wishes to team up against the mutual foe. Dracula moves to attack him, but with a quick counter, Zobek forces him outside, where it turns out to be over a millennium later in the year 2057. Zobek knows Dracula no longer wishes to be an immortal, promising to free him, and in response, Dracula disappears to prepare for the battle ahead. Castlevania Lords of Shadow has enjoyed the success of selling over 1.8 million copies worldwide. Personally, I'm a big fan of the series' reboot, both in how they executed it and how they reimagined a lot of the iconic characters and lore, but let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next Battlefield.